Hi there, in this quick tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how I created this sort of chainmail effect or mail effect. I'll have preceded this tutorial with a short video that shows you it in more detail, but you can see it's essentially a load of rings arranged in different ways to give you the effect. And you can add this to a cloth simulation as I originally did in order to give you some clothing to drape over a model. But I'm just going to demonstrate how I used geometry nodes to create this effect. So to begin with, we'll just create a new blend file and I'm going to add a mesh which will be a torus. We may not want quite as many subdivisions as this because we're going to add quite a few of them. So let's try 24 major segments and that will do I think. We'll right click it and say shade smooth and then we'll go to materials. I'm going to set this to EV by the way. We'll go to materials and say new. To begin with I'm just going to give it a moderately dark slightly bluish color and turn metallic all the way up and roughness a fair way down. So you can see there's our chainmail ring, perhaps slightly up from there. I'm gonna add slightly to the material later just to give a bit of variation across the object, but that will do for the start and we'll call this ring. So just in case you've rescaled it, make sure you apply scale and then we'll just move that off to the side somewhere out of the way. I'm now just going to add a plane apply the scale and now I need to subdivide it and each vertex is going to be where we will have a ring although we will have some around the vertex as well so we're going to need quite a few subdivisions so you can see here we would just have nine rings three by three so we want quite a few more than that and we'll go with 25 at the moment obviously you'd probably want more than that on a whole chainmail vest or whatever so that's our subdivided plane. I'm going to call up a new window up here and we'll change this to the geometry node editor and we'll say new. You can also do that by just adding a geometry node directly under the modifiers. And here's our simple input and output. And so to begin with, I'm going to add a point instance into here. So that's going to take the geometry information from the plane and instance an object around that geometry information and the object I'm going to select is the ring. So immediately you can see we've got a lot of the chainmail rings here. They're too big, so we obviously need to make those smaller. So I'm now going to add a point scale node. And for convenience, I'm also going to add an input, which is a value. This will come in handy later. I use a value of 0.125, so I'll put that in there and then we'll just drop that into the factor. But we need to change the scale factor from an attribute to a vector otherwise it doesn't work and I'll just put my scale back in there it does work just using a simple float straight into there now you can see we've got all of our rings appearing on each vertex so that's a good starting point we'll probably need to adjust the scale a bit perhaps if we go to point two maybe even larger than that so we want them to be close together but not quite touching so we'll go with that so next I will want to rotate rings and things like that and also move them. So I'm gonna add two more nodes, which is a point rotate node, drop that one in there. And I'm going to add a point translate node. At the moment, I haven't changed any values in here, so they're having no effect. You can see if I start changing this, I can rotate the rings. And if I change this one from attribute to vector, I can start moving them around in X, Y, Z. But for this first set, I'm gonna leave them exactly as they are. So I'm now going to take these four nodes, Shift D to duplicate them and just drop them here. You could create a completely separate geometry nodes block, but that's not necessary. I'm going to connect in my group input, so the geometry input into here. And I'm gonna add another node, which is join geometry. Drop that in there and then bring the output of this one into there. And I also need, of course, to connect my scale value into here. So at the moment, it doesn't look like anything's happening. Just join those two points with shift, right, drag. There's no sign that that's doing anything yet, but if I move those rings slightly, you can see we've actually got a new set of rings now. So I'm gonna rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees. And now I'm going to shift on the Y axis until I'm happy with where those rings are. So there you go. So we've now got a load of chains. I'm now going to copy not just those four nodes, but the geometry join node as well. Shift D, put those down there. So we don't forget, let's connect in the scale here. We'll put that join geometry node there, take all of that into there and that out to there. And obviously join in our geometry input there. Now again at the moment it's exactly the same settings as the last one so I'm going to set y back to zero. 
but it's still got the offset. That's why we can see it. And I'll set X to 90 now. I'm going to set Y offset back to zero and then we'll set an X offset. And suddenly you can see, it looks like it needs to be 0.4, you can see we've now got a set of chainmail links. Now there are different ways of linking chainmail. Some of them look like this. You don't have to have 90 degrees. You could of course go for 45 degrees. So they're all at an angle like that. And you can connect this in such a way that you could do that to all of them at once. If you look online, there are multiple different ways that chainmail could be linked, but this is probably one of the simplest. You can also have more chain links than just the four going into one. So you could have have them going across here, for example. But again, the same principle applies. You just need another set of these and then you're in business. So let's just add a simple light, make it reasonably bright, and we'll set the background to black. And we'll add some three point lights as well. It's really just getting a bit more lighting in the scene. And we'll set an environmental text here, something like that. So we've got enough light to see what's going on now. So we'll go back to our ring, we'll go back to the shader editor, and we'll just do a few more things with that. So I'm gonna add a color mix node. I'm gonna set the top to very slightly blue gray texture, and then the bottom to a slightly orangey browny material, and then connect that into the base color. I'm gonna add a converter, which is a color ramp, and that's gonna be the control for that color mix node. I'm going to add texture, which is a noise texture. I used a scale of about 20, detail at 16 and then just connect the factor of that into the color ramp and then add an input which is texture coordinates use the object output into the vector on the noise and then we can play around with these options it's really just to help to get some variation in the color so sometimes it can be a bit difficult to see what's going on so in those circumstances i tend to just put very different colors on and perhaps set the uh, roughness up to here and you can see at the moment that we've got variation in the color across the rings now that might be what you want but if you want it more to be a variation across the object that these rings form part of then we need to go to here and just select our in this case plane and now you can see the noise is working across the whole object and I've turned the scale down there it was a bit high so that shows you the sort of where the rusty areas are going to be so I'll go back here and set my original colors to roughly where I felt they should be. I used B spline so it wasn't such a hard line between one and the other. And then we can open these up a bit as well, perhaps darken that a bit as well. And of course I need to change the roughness as well. So what I also did was I added converter which was a math node, set that to multiply. I used an initial value of about 0.4, connect the output of my color ramp into there and then take that value out into roughness. And now you can see where we've got what may be rust. It's not quite as reflective. And obviously you can put a lot more effort into the material than I did, but it just gives you a quick idea of what's going on. So that makes it less reflective if I increase the multiplier and if I make it lower more so. Perhaps I'll open these up a little bit and then also set the scale down a little bit as well. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, let me know. I will upload this file for my Patreon patrons and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot.